Hi, I'm Gnome, and welcome to Sailing, a skill concept and runelight demo. Along with my friend Gentle Tractor, I'd like to present our own version of a sailing skill, packaged with a runelight plugin that will allow you to test out the very basics of how this skill might work. Please note that this presentation has been released alongside another video, where Gentle Tractor and I go into greater depth on each of sailing's components and our reasoning behind them in an unscripted sit down chat. Before we formally begin, please recognize that there are limitations as to what I could do with the RuneLight plugin. Limitations of time, talent, and technology. Things that presumably wouldn't be lacking in an official sailing skill. Such limitations include a lack of proper animations, or the fact that RuneLight can't make your camera track your boat as it does normally your character, or that the plugin isn't as feature complete as I initially desired. I hope these issues don't prove too distracting from this presentation or the plugin once it's in your hands. At the end of this video, we'll discuss what's actually in the plugin and how it works. But first, let's chat about the full skill proposal. Sailing is a skill that takes place in the real game overworld. Unlike many concepts out there, this version of sailing takes a very integrated, grounded approach, rather than tucking the skill behind instances or into one corner of the world. This means that you'll be traversing already familiar waters on boat. Expect to pass into the shadow of the Great Wizard's Tower, Swing by and say hello to the players fishing at Catherby. Sail through and insult the crab slayers of Karend, or join with your friends and make the great circumferential trek around the entirety of the main continent. So how does sailing work? While on the water, your player will be transformed into a small boat like a cog, a small medieval vessel with a single sail. The overworld is reserved for small vessels only. Large vessel sailing is something we'll discuss later. Once you've debarked, you're given a control menu with a few simple controls. Instead of using a point-and-click system, a sailboat will automatically move on its own in the direction it's pointing. Use the wheel buttons to turn left or right while moving or anchored in place. Your boat's speed is also under your control. This icon in the corner indicates the direction the wind is going, as well as the direction of your boat. Align your boat with the wind to go faster, or more carefully modulate your speed with the sail speed controls. Alternatively, a toggle exists to enable keyboard controls, giving you room to experiment with different control schemes and find what works best for you. And those are the fundamental basics of how sailing works. It's intended to be simple enough that your former 2007 selves would understand, but also lay the groundwork for more complex activities that might appeal to an audience looking for a little more excitement. So how do you actually start sailing? To begin, you'll first need a boat. Like many other tools, boats come in tiers from normal to redwood. When starting out, you can either buy a boat from a portmaster located at any of the major in-game ports, or build it yourself with construction. Higher sailing levels will allow you to sail higher level boats, which can take more damage and store more drops and resources acquired while sailing. Whichever option you choose, you'll be able to use that boat to get on the water from any boat launch. Boat launches are the start and end point of sailing and represent numerous in-game spots where it's safe to launch a sailboat. Most of these are as simple as a good spot of beach, but will also include most docks and ports around the game world. Do note that you'll be restricted from landing at boat launches in areas you don't have access to. For example, the denizens of Taranwin wouldn't permit you from landing in their region until you finished Regicide. Now, how do you level up sailing? First, token amounts of sailing XP are granted whenever you're actively moving on the water. This can sustain you for the first few levels as you get the hang of sailing's controls, but tapers off quickly relative to XP per level scaling. You can also pick up shipping contracts from a portmaster at any port, which sees you delivering a crate of goods to another port by water. Contracts are much better experience and benefit from good use of the basic sailing mechanics to complete them quickly. On completion of a contract, you're rewarded with a mixture of GP and doubloons, a sailor's currency. When purchasing from shops, doubloons are valued at 1 GP each, but any goods purchased with them don't decrease the actual shop stock, increasing the effective available stock while maintaining lower costs. Both regular sailing and shipping contracts are fairly relaxed activities, requiring low levels of attention. While easy and accessible to any player anywhere, they're not the most efficient or rewarding training methods. Now one of the main benefits of sailing is being able to get around some parts of the world much faster than before. At top speeds, you'll expect to sail twice as fast as running, and can travel through large swaths of previously unnavigable terrain. This will especially help lower level players get around the world faster. For higher level players who have access to innumerable teleports, 
Sailing also offers some new fast travel options. Fast travel would be available from any boat launch to any port shown here with the appropriate sailing level. At the highest sailing levels, players can even select a few boat launches to add as a port of destination. Continuing on with new activities, trials are extensions of basic sailing that test and hone your handle the mechanics. Across the game world, there are a number of trial areas set up by local mariners, areas of dense obstacle courses. You are expected to sail through the trial as fast as possible, with faster times granting more XP. Each time you complete a trial, the designated path is randomly redrawn through a list of preset paths to add some variety. Trials are a very efficient way of training sailing, but require a deeper knowledge of the mechanics, quick acting to navigate through the course without hitting obstacles, and tight control of your sail speed. Personal and global bests are kept for each path of each trial, offering performance feedback for self-improvement and comparison against other players. Naval combat is much like regular combat in that you can fight against NPCs, each of you being able to dish out and receive damage. Your boat's cannon has a set range, and if your target is in range, you can hit the fire cannon button to send a cannonball their way. To destroy other vessels, therefore, you'll need to have a good handle of your regular ship controls to outmaneuver your opponents. The enemies you'll find on the water would be varied much like those you're already familiar with, with different levels, strengths, and mechanics. You'll find merchants which flee when attacked, pirates which attack back, and other monsters including your regular slew of krakens, sirens, sea serpents, and the like. Rewards from naval combat should be much like current PVM, with each enemy having their own table of random drops. As something unique to pirate vessels, ammunition crates can drop as well, which unlock the ability to smith new cannonball variants for your boat to make naval combat a bit more thoughtful. These would also work in a dwarf multi-cannon, granting useful alternatives for PVM. Now if we are introducing the player to water as new traversable terrain, just like any new area expansion, that area needs to be fleshed out. Therefore, it should touch on various skills with sailing as the vehicle to act out said skills. These activities I've broadly called saltwater skilling. Under the saltwater skilling umbrella, we have offshore fishing, which grants access to unique fish with additional effects when eaten, dredging, a method of mining for bulk ores at lower XP rates, seabird hunting, essentially harpooning seabirds for sacred feathers, which grant fire making and prayer XP when burned, and coral farming, a new farming activity that grants access to new coral jewelry to add to your usual enchanted jewelry collection. You'll notice the number of tools are available in the UI. Switch your tool to match the appropriate activity, whether it's the cannon for firing, the rod for fishing, or a harpoon for hunting. Please note that due to time restraints, only the cannon and fishing rod are currently functional in the plugin. And finally, any resources you gather while on the water are automatically stored in your boat's inventory which scales in size with your tier of boat. Redwood boats, for example, can carry up to 28 extra items. These items can be withdrawn from your boat at any bank. Before we tackle the last few sailing activities, let's discuss one of the skill's biggest rewards, equipable charms. It was often the case that sailors of the old world would carry lucky charms and other superstitious baubles, hoping it would grant them protection and strength during dangerous voyages. Charms can be found once you have the appropriate sailing level as random rewards from completing shipping contracts, monster drops, or from the saltwater skilling activities. They are equipable in the new charm slot and grant fairly straightforward bonuses to melee, ranged, magic, and prayer. They're dropped in an incomplete form, requiring smithing, crafting, runecraft, or prayer to complete. While the complete charms are tradable, they do require their appropriate skills to equip. Charms of protection grant melee defense bonuses, Charms of striking grant melee offensive bonuses. Charms of shielding and piercing do the same for ranged. And charms of warding and evocation do the same for magic. Charms of faith grant small prayer bonuses, while other prayer charms grant unique buffs. Next, we have treasure hunts, which as the name implies, are essentially clue scrolls on the water. The issue with expanding the current clue scroll system is that each update that's added great new cosmetics has simultaneously diluted the current reward pool causing all of the previous rewards to become harder to obtain. Treasure hunts would allow us to safely expand the current system by generating a completely new reward pool and to test out different clue types rather than incessant puzzle boxes. You would collect treasure maps while doing activities on the ocean, and the hunts themselves would take place primarily on the water and shores. A couple ideas for new clue types would be chasing down a ghostly pirate's vessel, deciphering a coded map, 
or sailing a particular pattern in a certain area. And finally, we come to the parts of a hypothetical sailing skill that tends to gather the most interest. New islands and expeditions, or randomly generated island chains. However, this is also where the scope of what a sailing skill is and what it does broadens indefinitely. A new island or dungeoneering-like minigame could constitute anything, any collection of activities, bosses, or rewards, where sailing is merely the vehicle for engaging in these places rather than the primary focus. Already the collective community consciousness has constituted thousands of ideas for what these activities might look like, from armoring your large vessel with equipment and cannons, or hiring a specialized crew, to tackling random events at sea and establishing a base of operations on a randomly generated island. General Tractor and I have found many of these ideas inspiring, and would love to see them realized in-game. However, the focus of today was to outline what the sailing skill actually is at its core, how it is trained, and how it's acted out, and to keep the proposed development time of a basic sailing skill beneath that which would be required from essentially a Dungeoneering 2.0 or a Raids 4 on water, an update which, alone, would likely require several years to properly realize. And so, to summarize, these are fantastic ideas, but today we're merely ensuring that we've solidified the foundations of a sailing skill before building up to the next level. And that is our main pitch for a sailing skill. Once again, we've also posted a video of us rambling about this topic in full, breaking down each section and discussing our overarching design goals, which you can find linked below. Let's change gears and quickly talk about the plugin. At the time of this video's release, the plugin will have been submitted to RuneLight for review, meaning it's likely several weeks away from approval. To start, you simply have to right-click over a spot of water and select Build Boat to spawn a boat under your control. For the purposes of this plugin, I've let you start sailing from anywhere, not just from a boat launch. Once you spawn a boat, your combat tab will change to a sailing tab, where all your controls lie as I've described before. Within the plugin, you'll be able to spawn several NPC dummies to fire at by right-clicking the water and selecting the appropriate NPC. To get a sense of your cannon's range, you can toggle the cannon range button to enable the overlay. Hitting fire will fire your cannon if there is a valid target. Around the game world are several preset NPC spawns, including crocodiles in Brimhaven, seagulls at Catherby and south of the Karen Woodland, krakens south of Remington, and a fun little surprise at Corsair Cove. An additional means of control is available by enabling the keyboard control toggle. This works very similarly to your mouse controls using a basic WASDA system, with A and D turning your boat left and right, and W and S increasing or decreasing your sail speed, and spacebar is your tool or fire button. You'll notice several other buttons which, due to time restraints, are currently non-functional. The simple idea is that these are your tools for engaging in other activities on the water, like harpooning seabirds, dredging the seafloor for minerals with the net, spotting treasures as part of treasure hunts, and the ship inventory button, which would open up to show all the drops and resources you've collected on your voyage. Feel free to spend some time getting to know the controls. You may find it helpful to use RuneLight's detached camera plugin, or play with the keyboard control scheme in the config to get your ideal setup. If you'd like, you can also try offshore fishing at Southern Karen Woodland for Marlin, at Mudskipper Point for Grouper, or at Catherby for Sturgeon. Additionally, if you'd like to test how familiar you are with the sailing mechanics, try out one of the trials either at Southwest Lumbridge Swamp or at the Lighthouse. Again, these activities are not fully fleshed out, they are merely meant to give a sense of the direction a sailing skill could take. As an amateur connoisseur of runelight development, there's only so much I could do without a fully-fledged team of developers, artists, animators, and quality assurance behind me, so I do appreciate your understanding in this regard. All in all, thank you very much for your time. I hope you've enjoyed the sailing skill concept, and I hope you have a great day.